Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents Which Chemical Makes Ants Walk Like Zombies? Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Have you ever seen an ant acting strange? Sometimes ants are infected with a fungus called Ophiocordyceps that can change their behavior. The fungus causes them to walk like a zombie, climb up nearby plants, and bite to hang on tightly. It does this so that the wind will help spread its infectious spores. But how does this happen? Our previous research discovered that Ophiocordyceps fungi can make a chemical similar to one called aflatrem. Since these types of chemicals are known to cause trouble with walking in other animals, we wondered if it might be causing the zombie walk in ants too. To test our hypothesis, we injected ants with aflatrem and found that it makes them move more slowly. It also causes them to stagger, like they are dizzy. We also discovered that aflatrem can change how much some genes are turned up or down in the ants. By making it harder for ants to walk, we think the fungus uses aflatrem-like chemicals to keep the ants from leaving once they are in the perfect spot for the biting behavior. This helps the fungus to spread its spores better. Introduction Imagine an ant suddenly starts acting weird. It leaves its job and relatives in the nest, climbs up a nearby plant, walks like it's dizzy, clamps its jaws onto a leaf or twig, and stays there until it dies. It sounds like something out of a creepy movie, right? But this happens in real life. It is caused by a strange fungus that turns ants into zombies. The fungus is called Ophiocordyceps. When it infects an ant, it releases biomolecules to slowly take over the ant's body and brain. It makes the ant leave its colony to find a high place to firmly attach itself. Then the fungus eats the ant from the inside, grows out of the ant's body, and spreads its spores. From high above the ground, these spores float down on the wind, ready to infect the next ant. One typical behavior we see in zombie ants is the zombie walk. The ants start to walk clumsily, like the zombies we see in movies. One possible reason is that the fungus releases a chemical similar to aflatrem. Aflatrem is a toxin that can cause shaking and poor coordination in animals like cows. This makes us wonder, do these chemicals have anything to do with zombie ants' strange behavior? And if so, how do they affect the ants' genes? These are the questions we wanted to answer. In this image, you can see a Campanatus floridanus ant infected with Ophiocordyceps campanati floridani. In the middle of the image is the ant. You can see the fungus growing out of the ant between the head and the thorax towards the top of the image. Methods. We collected three Campanatus floridanus ant colonies from the Arboretum at the University of Central Florida. Each colony had 100 to 200 ants. To test the effects of aflatrem, we injected ants with different doses of the chemical. Because aflatrem is not soluble in water, we dissolved it in 10% acetone. To make sure acetone is safe for ants, we tested it using the following two control groups. Seven ants from each colony injected with a salt solution called phosphate buffered saline, or PBS, and seven ants from each colony injected with 10% acetone suspended in PBS. PBS has the same osmolarity as insect blood. This means it has the same number of solute particles per unit of liquid. This is important because water likes to flow to areas containing more solutes to balance the osmolarity. If the buffer we add has too many or too few solutes, the water inside the insect's blood cells will move out or in. This causes the cells to either shrivel up or burst. This is exactly why hospitals use saline for patients. Once we determined that a 10% acetone PBS solution was safe to use, we added increasing amounts of aflatrem to make our test groups for our study. Seven ants from each colony injected with 10 nanograms of aflatrem, seven ants from each colony injected with 50 nanograms of aflatrem, seven ants from each colony injected with 100 nanograms of aflatrem, 
and seven ants from each colony injected with 500 nanograms of aflatrim. We recorded the ants' behavior for 30 minutes. We tracked their resting, grooming, walking, climbing, biting, and staggering behavior. A computer program also helped us measure the ants' speed and movement. Once we had our results for the behavior, we extracted RNA from the heads of ants in both our PBS group and our 500 nanogram aflatrim group. This was to check if aflatrim changes how much genes are turned up or down in the brain as well. We looked at the RNA by sequencing which genes were being used and how much. We then compared the results from each group to see which genes were affected by the aflatrim. We also compared them to previous data for ants infected by the fungus. Here in figure one, you can see a microinjection of a C. floridanus ant with aflatrim. In the center of the image, you can see the ant being held by gray gloved fingers. The injector is coming from the right of the image and piercing the ant's thorax. The microinjector looks like a glass tube. Results. So how do different doses of aflatrim affect the ant's behavior? The more aflatrim the ants got, the more time they spent resting. As the amount of aflatrim increased, the ants moved more slowly. More aflatrim did not affect the distance the ants traveled. And ants that received higher doses of aflatrim staggered more as they walked. Plus, we found that 261 genes were turned up or down in the ants that got aflatrim. Some of these genes control muscle contractions and how signals travel between muscles and the brain. Others are responsible for the ant's sense of smell and communication. We found that 113 of the genes affected by aflatrim were also affected by the fungus during infection. Some genes, like those for smell and muscle function, were affected in similar ways. Others were affected in different ways. Here in figure two, you can see the percentage of different behaviors observed with an increasing amount of aflatrim in the injections. On the far left, you can see results from the control group of PBS, or phosphate buffered saline, and 10% acetone. Then, from left to right, you can see the test groups in order of aflatrim concentration, 10 nanograms, 50 nanograms, 100 nanograms, and 500 nanograms on the far right. The percentage of time each behavior was observed is represented by different colors. Blue represents climbing, yellow represents walking, red represents staggering, green represents grooming, and orange represents biting. Looking at the figure, what is the relationship between aflatrim concentration and staggering behavior? Discussion. Parasites like Ophiocordyceps have some strange ways of controlling their hosts. This fungus turns ants into zombies, making them act in ways that help the fungus grow and spread. It's fascinating how some parasites are able to manipulate behavior. The more aflatrim that ants received, the more they staggered and had trouble moving. This zombie walk behavior suggests that aflatrim-like chemicals are playing a role in how the fungus controls the ants. The fungus likely uses these chemicals to slow the ants down and keep them at a high location. This way, the ants are in the right spot for the fungus to grow and spread its spores with the wind more effectively than it can on the forest floor. We also discovered that aflatrim affects genes responsible for muscle control. Some genes that help the ants move were less active. This change may explain why the ants staggered and had difficulty walking. This means the fungus and aflatrim both target similar pathways in the ants, leading to the same behaviors. Conclusion. So, the next time you see an ant, remember, there's more going on than you might think. Tiny creatures like ants have fascinating stories to tell. Whether you're watching ants in your backyard or working on a science project, every little detail matters. Keep questioning and keep learning. You might discover amazing stories hidden all around you. Thank you for listening to this recording. This work has been adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Animal Behavior, published in September 2023. Research conducted by William C. Beckerson, 
Courtney Kreider, Umar A. Mohammed, and Charissa De Becker from the Department of Biology at the University of Central Florida. See the PDF for additional information about the authors and their affiliations. Please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.